Hey everyone, welcome back to To Be Like Christ. We're talking about Matthew 24, which is a fun chapter in five minutes. This might be a little bit difficult. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24 in five minutes. If you want the outline that you're about to see in the background of the screen, you can download it for free on our website. There's also a link to our Patreon account if you want to support production of free resources so that people around the world can understand the Bible better. Matthew 24, when did the events of this chapter happen? Well, the tail end of the book of Matthew, most of this happens during the last week of Jesus's life on earth before he's crucified. This would have been during his earthly ministry at the tail end of somewhere between year 26 AD and year 31 AD. Really for this chapter, we've just got two main characters, Jesus, who's gonna do most of the talking, and his apostles who are going to be doing most of the listening. The events of this chapter happen in and around the city of Jerusalem and on the Mount of Olives, which was to the east of Jerusalem, just a little ways. As far as our outline of this chapter, in the first section, verses 1 through 3, Jesus prophes prophesies about the destruction of the temple. So while exiting the temple with his apostles, Jesus said that there would come a day when this, the whole thing was going to be destroyed. Now, they went out, probably walked to the Mount of Olives, and there the disciples asked Jesus for specifics regarding the destruction of Jerusalem and for the signs of, quote, the end of the age. Jesus is going to go on through much of the rest of this chapter and answer their questions. So as far as these signs and the destruction, uh, he begins talking about that. He talks about false messiahs and natural disasters and persecutions in verses 4 through 14. So Jesus told the disciples that uh, after he left them and returned to heaven, there would be these fake Christs who would pop up, fake messiahs who were claiming to you know, be him, and they would lead many people astray. They would hear of wars and rumors of wars, famines and earthquakes, but Jesus told them that when they heard about those things, those didn't necessarily mark the imminent end. Jesus' genuine disciples would be persecuted, and many of them would be persecuted to the point of breaking, where they would fall away from the truth, and many would turn uh, and backstab and betray their fellow believers. And Jesus said, when the gospel was preached throughout the whole world, then the end would come. In verses 15 through 31, Jesus gives the disciples instructions for how to escape the city of Jerusalem before it was destroyed. The disciples were to flee the city and run into the mountains when they saw, quote, the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. There would be a great tribulation in those days, and the Jews would endure a tremendous amount of suffering. More false messiahs would arrive during that time and, and lead other people astray. And uh, Jesus said that after the period of tribulation, the sign of the Son of Man would appear in heaven, and the angels would gather the elect from all of the earth. And I know this is a, a chapter that gets talked about a lot. I have a full, in-depth, verse-by-verse study of Matthew 24 on my channel if you want to go check that out, and if some of these statements have you scratching your head or you're curious about them. Verses 32 through 35 is our next section. It's the sign of the fig tree. Just as the leaves on a fig tree signify that summer is around the corner, Jesus said that the appearance of some of these things that he had just talked about, they will indicate that the uh, temple's destruction is near. And then Jesus said something really important, and that was that all of these things that he had just talked about, they would happen within the generation, the lifetime of the, the apostles that he was talking to. Then it appears that Jesus moves from talking about the destruction of the temple to talking about the end of time, when eternity begins. This is verses 36 through 51, the end of the chapter. Jesus said that nobody knows when the end will come. He said, like the flood in Noah's day, way back in the book of Genesis, uh, nobody is going to know when it's going to happen. So Jesus told the disciples to stay awake and to remain ready because uh, the end could happen at any time. Faithful servants who are ready to meet the Lord when he returns, they will be rewarded. But the unfaithful will be punished, and they will be put in a place of, quote, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, this chapter in the big picture of things, this is a really big, important chapter in the history of the Jews. The destruction of Jerusalem occurred in about 70 AD, so we're probably talking about 40 years after Jesus said these words. And if you want to read a non-Christian historical writer give an account of these events, 
you can read about them in the writings of Josephus. The Roman army came, they sieged the city, they destroyed it, they killed thousands of Jews, and what the scriptures tell us is that God used the Romans to bring judgment on the Jewish people who had rebelled against him for so long and would not repent of their sins and come back to him. And for our application from this chapter, if anything in here confused you, that's understandable. This is a pretty tough chapter in the Bible. But to understand this chapter, you need to know a little bit about the historical background of some of these events, which is extra biblical material. And the more you know about that historical information, the clearer this chapter becomes. So the application is, is that secular history can help us to understand the Bible uh, in, in a lot of different sections. And so even if you hate history, and I know there's a lot of people who do, it can be very valuable. So don't neglect your history book when reading the Bible because history and the Bible tie in together and you will be a better Bible student if you understand the historical background and the historical context in which some of these scenes played out.